thanks very much for joining me again. This week's pattern is going to be one for the rivers. It's a streamer pattern and in the vise is a Hanak 900 barbless hook and it's at size 6. The thread I'm going to be using today is the UTC Ultra Thread. It's a 140 denier and as you can see it's black. First thing I'm going to do is get some wax onto my thread and get some wraps onto the hook shank. I'm going to start just in behind the eye, a couple of millimetres and I'm going to come back about a centimetre. Then I'm going to come back again to approximately two eighths of an inch back from the eye. I can remove my waist at this point. And what I would like to do with this fly is use something similar to these for the eyes. But unfortunately these eyes are too big and this is the biggest hook I've got. So I'm going to have to compromise today. And to do that I'm going to apply some of the Dazzle Dumbbell eyes. These are black nickel, uh, 3.2 millimetres from Funky Fly Tying. So I've got a set here and what I want to do is just catch that on with a couple of figure of eight turns. Excuse my fingers. Make sure it's well caught into place. Now, I've used these before and uh, they're very good, but a bit characterless. The, the, I suppose the idea is they're, uh, they're convex eye, so they sort of supposed to reflect light. Uh, I'm not too sure how how good they do that is, but um, I'm going to do my best with them. So what I've done is I've got my eye securely in there and what I want to do to add value is some super glue. This will hold them into place nice and steady. And what I would do at this point is um, get other things ready while I was waiting. Um, for example, uh, I've got to get some materials into my clip later. So I'd just be doing stuff like this, waiting on this super glue to dry. So let's give it another couple of seconds. And then while I'm waiting on that drying, I can at least bring my thread all the way down to the bottom. And so I brought it down to roughly where a barb would be on a barbed hook. So while I'm waiting for my uh, super glue to, to go hard at the front there, what I'm going to do is try and bling up my eyes a little bit. And to do that, I'm going to use a new product from Troutline. Uh, this is called Glitter Indigo. And it's a, it's a UV resin, uh, a hotspot UV resin. It's probably not what um, Troutline designed it for. It's probably meant for Perdigon nymphs. But I'm going to use it for this and see how I get on. So I'm just off camera there taking, taking the lid off and I'll try and show you what it looks like inside. Um, it's very glistery, lots of um, light reflecting off of the green bluey stuff. So I'm going to use my bodkin needle here and I'm going to get a very small amount onto my needle. Now, I don't know how well you'll be able to see this but it, it actually behaves extremely well on the needle. So I've got it there. I'll do your side first. So I'm just going to tilt it to the side. Like so. Maybe got a wee bit too much on there. Just coming again. The thing with this, you've got all day. You know, you take your time with it. Get it how you want it before you uh, go firm on it. So I'll get a little bit more onto the needle here. Doesn't take very much. And just do my side now. And that's going to give me something just a little bit different in the eyes. As I say, you can buy the dumbbell eyes 
with the, the eye shape like I showed you um, here. And probably if I was tying a lot of these, that would be the option I'd go for. But because I'm only tying a few for myself, I'm going to take my time and just work away with the resins to get an effect that I quite like. So just cue that off, make sure it's done. Now, I'm just going to put the top back on this. I don't want it left open. Um, so that was the glitter indigo. Now, Troutline do a whole um, array of different hotspot resins. I've got a few to try, and I'm sure you're going to see some in upcoming videos. So, glitter indigo. To finish that off, I'm going to use my Solaris clear UV resin with a brush and just go over that. What it does is it gives it a little bit of protection. And not only that, I think it helps make it glister a bit more just to give it that lifelike uh, appeal. So bear with me while I just cure that off. And uh, the thing with the resins, if you've got a few different ones, you can really get inventive with it. You know, I could put a, a little black dot in the middle to represent a pupil, um, or I could add multiple layers of resin just to get different effects. And, it, it, you know, the world's your oyster. You can play about with these things uh, and just get an effect that you like. So there we go. I'm fairly happy with that. I'm going to lock down my vise again. And next, I'm going to bring in my rib. And on this occasion, I'm going to use this soft wire. It's a copper rib and it's small. So I've got a little bit of that. I'm going to push it all the way up to the eyes. Catch it in and just in big open turns to secure it into place. I'm going to hold it into there. Next then, I'm going to bring in my Zonker strip. Uh, not quite sure where I got this. Um, and it's quite important actually because what I'm using here has got black tips to the edge of the fibre. And that's quite important when I come to finish off at the head. So I'm going to be using some more of this. Um, later on. So what I'm going to do is take about two centimetres of the hide and, and at that point I'm going to try and split my zonker strip. And I can help myself out here by wetting my thumb and forefinger and just dampening down the fibres. That will just make it much easier to work with. There we go. So I've made a nice split in the strip and I'm going to lay that up to the point where my thread is. Now I'm going to get one wrap in there just to hold it in place. Before I go any further I'm just going to get a bit extra wax onto my thread and all this does is give it an extra bit of strength just at this point. I mean it's not going to go anywhere because my wire rib will um, see to that. Okay, so I bend everything back now. So everything's behind my thread, all my zonker strips behind my thread. The, uh, the dubbin I'm going to use, and you can use anything, but I'm going to use some of the Troutline flash dubbing. It's called Flow Violet. Well, for my money, it looks pink, and, and that's exactly what I'm after. So uh, I've taken out some from the packet. I suppose it has got a violet tinge to it. Hard to say. My wife says I'm colour blind, so who am I to tell? So I'm going to just spread some out in my fingers. And I'm going to dub it onto my thread. Like so. You can always add a bit more if I've not got enough. Or take some out if I've um, put on too much. Now, I'm going to pull that right back because I want to be tucked right in there at the, at the base of the fly. Slick back any stray fibres and then just build up your body. Now, I want a slight taper in this 
and as you can see the taper's going the wrong way at the minute but don't worry it will be going the right way when I've finished so get a bit more in dubs onto the thread quite easily it's not a, a difficult material to work with and there I've got my taper going in the right direction now okay that's looking pretty good so I'm going to bring back my over wing and see how it's sitting now what I want to do next is split my zonker here where my thread is lying so I can see that it's looking pretty good there I'm just going to play about until I'm happy with it and again with my thumb and forefinger to help me out I'm just going to dampen down my thread sorry my hair from the wing get it out the way and then I can come in and capture that in two or three turns will do you bring your thread over your eye and to the front of the fly next you want to remove that strip, excuse my fingers, like so. Just remove that bit of fibre there. So, all good so far. I'm going to bring my thread back up and I'm going to come over the eye and I can just capture that end and just to tidy it up a little bit. So, that's looking good so far. Next thing then, Holding your tail, bring all your feathers up. Feathers. Hair. We're using hair today, Lindsay. So, I've done that, and now I can bring my rib. I'm going to turn it once around where my thread is lying. At the bottom here. And then I'm going to come up. Try and keep it fairly even. In between my zonker hairs. Now, my finger, I know my fingers are in the way slightly here, but you need about six sets of hands to make this uh, flow smoothly. And although this is quite a long video, it's actually a fairly quick fly to tie. Um, it's just that it's difficult doing it on camera. Like this. Usually I'd be um, whizzing through this, no problems at all, but I just want to try and make sure that you can see what I'm doing here so I've come over now and I'm in where I finished my zonker strip off here if you remember we've cut just the zonker strip just behind the eye there and I've got my wire rib now coming down so I'm going to capture the wire rib in with a couple of thread wraps like so okay once I've got that in keeping the thread under tension you can twist that away so I'm fairly pleased with how that's looking so far and before I do anything else I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush here and I'm just going to try and release some of the the fibres you don't need to go at it too hard just a few of the fibres there Slick it all back. And while you've been doing that, hopefully, your UTC thread here has managed to unspin itself. So I've got that flat bit to open up a dubbing loop if I want. And I do want to. Remember when the super glue was drying, I was busy getting uh, my clip full of some zonker. And all I've done is trimmed away the hide so that it's now... A straight line of hair so I've got to open up my dubbing look loop sorry like so and I'm using quite the thickest of the UTC black thread so it was quite easy to find uh, find the loop and I'm going to insert my clip
like so. And when I unclip it, I can wind it up and spin up my thread. Now, don't be overly worried about the little bit of excess you've seen there. That'll all be, all be kept into place with a dubbing brush. Okay. So, I don't know how well you can see it there, but I've got a, a, an absolutely fantastic... In fact, let me just wind this up slightly. I've got a lovely um, brush effect here with just the zonker strip hairs, and it really gives a great effect on the fly. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to come over with one turn behind the eyes and then at the top I'm going to come across the top and like in a figure of eight motion and then I'm now back in the front everything's in the front and I'm now at the very eye of the hook now I know it looks like a hot mess at the moment but um, Trust me when I tell you, I'll sort all that out. I'm going to lick my thumb and forefinger and just try and strip all that hair back. Now this fly, it's all about the movement and, and this, this, what I've just done here is going to give it loads of movement. Just wetting my fingers and trying to clear the eye. I mean it's a bit futile at the moment but I just want to get all the loose hairs out the way so once I've done that I can come in and start to build my head just try and make sure you're not catching any of the the loose hairs in then once you've got the head to how you would like it you can either whip finish and then add your varnish or you can do as I'm, I've just done and add some UV resin to your thread and do a half hitch. Like so. And I'll just cure that off before I cut away, just to be on the safe side. then I can come in with my snips and take that thread away. Now, with my dubbing brush, I can try and comb it out a bit. I know it's still a little bit damp, so you're probably not getting the dry effect to the fly. Just open my vise. And I can see that the eye's been totally shielded um, by the hair but trust me when it's completely wet that eye will become very visible and I'll, I'll, I'll try and show that in some photographs but it's difficult to do at the vice here but with the photographs of the fly hopefully you'll see the the effort was worth its while so there we go. Now what I'll do is I'll run it under the tap next just to get everything sitting how I want it and then I'll leave it to dry and it's ready for the fly box. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and I'll see you next time. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.